Welcome back. We're going to talk some more about lists and in particular looping constructs within lists. So let me remind you uh, uh, about the while loop. Uh, of course, the way a while loop is you have the while uh, statement, you have a condition that evaluates to true or false, you have the colon operator, and you have everything indented. Okay. So, and of course, the conditional sort of works the same way. You have the if statement. You have a conditional that evaluates to a Boolean value, true or false, colon, tab indent. That line gets evaluated if that statement is true. And of course, the whole body of the while loop gets evaluated as long as that top condition is true. So let's look at the, what this little bit of code does. I'm defining a list called nums. So nums, of course, is a list because it has a square bracket and a square bracket, and it is comma delimited. I have five elements the zeroth, first, second, third, fourth element in the list. Okay. And what is this little code going to do? Well, let's, let's look. While i is less than the len of nums, remember that len tells me the length of the list. Notice that that little guy right there says less than, not less than or equal to. So let's just skip down to this line of code right here, i equals i plus 1. So forget about this conditional for a minute. What is this while loop doing? It initializes i to 0. It says while i is less than 5, i equals i plus 1. So i starts out at 0, it goes to 1. Increment it one more time, it goes to 2, to 3, to 4. Is 4 less than the, than the length of the list? 5? Yes. Increment i by 1, it's 5. Is 5 less than 5? No, it's equal to, and we are out. So initializing at 0, uh, iterating until i is less than the, lump, the length of the list, and then incrementing by 1 will give me an index into every element of the list. I'm iterating through 0 to 4 to tap into each element of the list. And what am I going to do here? Well, let's go look at it. If num sub i, what is that doing right there, that square bracket operator? It is tapping into the ith element of the list. If that element, that number, mod 2, is equal to 0. So if I divide by 2 and the remainder is 0, what does it mean? It means it's even. And so I'm going to print str of num sub i plus is even. So why am I doing this? Well, that's a number. That's a string. So I want that to be a string concatenation. So I have to convert the number into a string. So this little code here takes a list of numbers and tells you which ones are even. Right? Really simple. Good. And notice, by the way, here we have just about every construct that we have learned to date. We have variable assignments, we have a looping construct, we have conditionals, we have uh, 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 Boolean expressions, we have conditionals, and we have variable assignments and increments. Everything bundled up into one nice little uh, code. It's not very interesting code, but look at all, how all the constructs come very neatly together. Now, Perfectly fine way to do uh, a looping construct over the number of elements in the list. Python uh, provides another looping construct called for loops. Conceptually, it's ex almost the same as a while loop. It will repeatedly evaluate the same lines of code over and over again. It's just that the syntax uh, is slightly different. So we're going to now introduce for loops, and then I'm going to show you the interaction of for loops and lists because they play very, very nicely together. Okay, so let's look at first at this while loop up here, and then we'll come down to this new for loop down here. So this is a while loop. We've actually seen this before, but let's just make sure we understand it. i equals 1. While i is less than or equal to 10, print i, i equals i plus 1. So what is this doing? Starting at 1, it will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it will print 10 because that says i less than or equal to 10. Once i is 11, we come up to this while loop. This evaluates to false and we are out. So this will simply print the numbers 1 through 10 in uh, increasing order. Okay, So we've already seen that before. No problem. Here is a for loop that will do exactly the same thing with just a little bit different syntax. So let's see what it is. For, that's, the, that's basically the replacement for while. That's why we call it a for loop, of course. I is a variable that I get to define. I tell this for loop, this is the variable name that I want. I could have called it x. I could have called it numbers. I could have called it whatever I want. It's my variable in the same way that I decided what that variable name is right there. In, that's a keyword. And now you specify a range of values that you want to iterate over. So for i in range 1 to 11 will 
hand you back the numbers, the integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I find this a little annoying in, in Python. That number is open. It doesn't give you that number. It's less than that number. Okay. So be really careful with this. When you specify the range, it starts at the first number and it stops at one less than the last number. That is, this is a less than, not a less than or equal to. Okay. And these are, this is, you may remember I said there's this classic off by one error that computer scientists have. This is exactly why. You start counting at zero. Is this inclusive? Is it not inclusive? You just got to sort of be careful with those boundary conditions. Okay. And then notice what I'm doing here is I'm printing I. Okay. Now, these two bits of code are exactly the same, but notice that in conceptually they're exactly the same. What the for loop has, it has a colon, you have tab indented, it will evaluate the body of the code this many times where I will take on the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10 on each iteration. So this will simply print 1 to 10 in increasing order. So why these two constructs? Why two looping constructs? Well, you're going to see in a little bit with lists that again, for loops and lists play very nicely. But notice also something here that's really nice, which is that here, Python's doing a lot of work for me. So first of all, I don't have to initialize the variable. That's being done for me by just the definition of range. Um, I don't have to, I'm not doing a Boolean check because I'm specifying the range. And I don't have to increment the variable because Python is doing it. So essentially what Python has done in a for loop, it's taken that line right there, the conditional check right there, and the increment right there, and it's sort of bundled it up all into this one line of code. Because what this line of code is saying is that i is going to take on in increments of 1, one the value starting at 1, running up to and including 10, which is exactly what that little bit of line code does. So this is just a nice little, if you will, syntactic sugar for doing exactly what you did up here, but it's just cleaner. Right? So instead of four lines of code, I've got two lines of code. It's all bundled up very nicely. So which one is right? Which one is wrong? There's no right or wrong. Sometimes this is sort of the more convenient or the cleaner way to do it. Sometimes you really do need this. Sometimes you really do need the, 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 the conditional check. Sometimes you're just iterating over a bunch of numbers, and the for loop is a little bit easier. All right, so let's see some examples with the for loop, and then uh, we'll talk some more about the differences between these two. All right, nums is equal to square bracket, square bracket, 1, 7, 4, 10, 8. There is my list with five elements indexed on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's five elements in the list, and I will take on the value 0 to 4. Now I'm going to try to write the exact same code I did before in the while loop, which is to print all even numbers in this list. All right, so for I in range, okay, there's the, the four in i of course is a variable of my choice range zero i absolutely want to start at zero and when do i want to stop when uh, i is equal to four so when len of what is len of nums it's the number of elements in the list that's five and if i shove a five there then i will stop at four i will take on the value zero one two three four Okay, so there's one nice place where I can just put the length of the list there, and it will never tap into that value. It stops one before. So i is now the index into this list, the same as it was, by the way, in the while loop. I've just written the looping construct a little bit differently. All right, colon indent. Here's the body of the while loop. I have a conditional. If num sub i mod 2 is equal to 0. Exact same code as before, by the way. Go back and look at that. This line is the same, it's just where i is coming from is from a for loop instead of a uh, while loop. And then, of course, if it is, if it's even, I print string nums is even, and I'm done. Notice again, I don't have to remember to increment the variable, I don't have to initialize the variable, I have this nice compact line of code that gives me exactly the values of, of i that I want, 0 to the length of the list minus 1. But conceptually, it's doing exactly what a while loop does. It has a range of values it's going to iterate over, um, and it has a body, and it evaluates that body over and over again, and it automatically reassigns that variable i there to whatever va values that you specified. Good. Now that's one way of iterating through a list. We iterate through the indices, and that's sort of the logical way that we've seen so far. That's the zeroth element, that's the first element, the second, the third, and the fourth, and that's how we did with the while loop. 
That's how we did it when we were just doing variable assignments on the first part of this lecture. And the for loop allows us to also say i takes on the value 0 to 4. Now the for loops also allow you to tap into the actual values. So not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but 1, 7, 4, 10, 18. So don't, don't confuse the values in the list from their index in the list. It's the address versus what's actually stored there. So let me show you how to do that. So again, I've got the same for statement here. I've got a new variable. I've just changed this variable name to, for no reason. I could have left it as an i, but I wanted to refer to it as n because it's the element of the list now. In, that's the same, nums. So this is different. So instead of giving a range, I'm saying I want n to take on the values inside of the list named nums. And by values, I mean 1, 7, 4, 10, 8. Or if they were the names of the Jupiter moons, Iowa, Europa. Or if they were, they were Lorax and Maisie or whatever it is, it takes on not the index, but the value. So n on the first iteration of this loop will be 1. On the second iteration, it will be 7. On the third iteration, it will be 4, and so on and so forth. So now look at my conditional. If n is the actual value in the list, I don't have to tap into the list. I don't have to go and grab the number. I've already done it. In fact, the for loop has done it for me. So now I simply say if n mod 2 is 0, then convert n to a string, concatenated with these is even, and I'm done. So look how nice and clean that is. There's none of the ranging. I don't have to tap into it in two different places. That just takes on the value. So there's this really nice relationship between for loops and lists in Python. And so for loops are sort of you know, designed in some ways to be really, to play nicely with lists because it gives you that two mechanisms for reading through the elements of a list, either by indexing and then going and grabbing the elements, that's what we saw on the previous slide, or directly tapping into it. Now, which one is right and which one is wrong? There's no right or wrong. There's just how clean is the code, how efficient is the code. And so for this particular case, I would argue this is the right way to do it. Because in the previous case, I didn't really care about the index. I just wanted the element. So why do the work myself when Python will do it for me? So just grab the element. Now, sometimes you want the index. Sometimes you want to know what are the indices, what are the positions of all of the even numbers, in which case this wouldn't have worked, and I would have absolutely had to do the one on the top. Okay? And we'll go back and forth between these, depending on what the logic and the code demands. Okay. So... I just want to re-emphasize the difference between these two things. They're exactly the same in terms of functionality. In fact, this version, which is uh, iterating over the indices, this version, which is iterating over the values, and the while loop have exactly the same functionality. There is absolutely no difference. They're just being written differently. There is no unique way to write code. Um, I would argue, again, that this is sort of the cleanest way to do it. Um, because all we care about is tapping into the actual values in the list, and I may as well just do it directly instead of doing it indirectly having to tap into the i element. Okay. So, for loops and lists, you can either iterate through the index of the position in the list, or you can iterate through the values stored in the list. Good. Now, one little sidebar here I want to mention is that strings sort of are like lists. They're sort of like a list of characters, but slightly differently. So here's what I mean by that. If I define the string, my string, to be Chevy exclamation mark, complete, just a random string, then I can reach in and grab the capital C, the H, the E, the V, the Y, and the exclamation mark using a for loop. So if I say for C, that's just my variable name, in my string, which is that variable right there, and then I print C, it will print capital C, followed by H, followed by E, followed by V, followed by Y, followed by, of course, exclamation mark. So I can reach in and grab individual character elements. And look, this is exactly the same way I reached in and grabbed individual elements of a list. Okay? Now, the only difference, well, there's a couple of differences, but one of the differences between strings and lists is I cannot do this. I cannot modify, I can't index in and do a modification. It's just the way Python has structured things. So some aspects of strings can be treated like lists, and others cannot. Good. Now, I think I said earlier on that lists can hold anything. So up until now, our, our lists have been homogeneous. 
They've been all numbers or all strings. But this list is perfectly valid. Mixed list is equal to square bracket, square bracket, comma delimited, one, integer, ABC, string, true, boolean, 2.0, floating point, perfectly valid list. Weird, I don't know why you would do this, but perfectly fine, no problem with that whatsoever. Now, in addition, lists can contain lists. So here's a list with how many elements? Two. This element right here, which is ABC, and this element, which is a list, which itself has three elements. Okay? So a list is just, think of it as sort of a number, a string, a boolean, a float. It's just another data type. And so we now have a list within a list. Okay? So let's just, to make sure we really understand this, let's look at this little bit of code right here. All right. So I'm going to say that L is equal to mixed list, which is this list right here with two elements, sub 1. What is that? Mixed list is this thing right here. That is the zeroth element, and this whole thing is the first element, right? Because there's a square bracket there and a square bracket there. And if there's another element, there'd be a comma right there and then another element. So when I say L is equal to mixed list sub 1, and I print L, I will get 3, 2, 1. I get the entire list. It's just, it's just a data type. Yeah, no problem. What happens if I print L sub 0? Well, let's see. L is this entire list. So if I print, right, because I've extracted it out, I've sort of pulled it out of mixed list, and now I have it in my own variable. And so if I print L sub 0, what do I get? Well, I get the little 3 right there. Okay, good. Now, so look what I did there. I, I had this list with a list in it. I reached in and I grabbed it out and I shoved it into a new variable L. But I also could have indexed into it directly if I wanted to with a double index. So let's look at this line of code right here. So we're going back to mixed list. What is the first element of mixed list? We've already determined that. It's this entire list. And then I'm going to take that whole list, basically you can think about that as L, and tap into the zeroth element, which of course is the 3. So this is what's called a two-dimensional or a multi-dimensional list. And I can access by simply using the double index operator. So the first index tells me where is it here along the first dimension. And then the second index tells me within that uh, what is the um, element. And you can do three-dimensional and four-dimensional. And we'll see a number of examples of this uh, in the coming weeks as we start looking more and more at lists. All right, that's it for now. We'll pick it up in a few minutes. See you soon.